This is where KinFX gets really fun to play around with. Using the full body IK node in Houdini, we can drive the entire character animation with a single bone, or multiple bones for certain poses. Nonetheless, it makes animation very quick and easy. Here, I'm moving the left hand bone to create a high hand wave, and by pinning down the feet and right hand, I'm able to create a realistic hand wave just by dragging the left hand bone. Let's get started with basic concept number two, IK controls and anchor points. Let's start with getting rid of these things but reusing the setup. So these were left off from the previous video. So now we have a very basic setup. Houdini has this full body IK node. As long as you're reusing some of the bones from the skeleton that was imported with the character, you'll find that animating with this IK node doesn't require any bone remapping at all. Throw down a blast node. So delete non-selected. Now I'm gonna choose a few joints that I'm gonna be using as my IK controls. Let's take the hand, select that on the viewport and then press enter. Now this is gonna delete everything else and isolate this one hand bone. Now I'm gonna feed this into my full body IK. So this is gonna be my control. First input of the full body IK node, we need the target skeleton, which is the full version, the complete skeleton of our character. I connect that to the first input and the second input of the full body IK will be our IK control. So that would be the hand bone that we have isolated over here. And I'm gonna connect that to the second input of the full body IK. This is where all the magic happens. Now this is supposed to connect to the third input of the joint deform node, but I'm going to do that in just a second. Bit more room, so I'm going to just drag this down. I'm going to throw down rig pose node because I'm going to move the IK bone, which is our hand bone. Uh, so highlight the rig pose node, come over here to the 3D viewport and press enter. By leaving the render flag on the full body IK node, we can see the entire rig or the resulting motion rig in the viewport. Next, highlight the rig pose node because we want to manipulate our IK control and the rig pose node will help us do that. Let me change the background so that you can view this a bit better too. Turn off the grid, highlight the rig pose node, come over here, press enter. So this tool is activated. We're gonna select this and I'm gonna start moving this around. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Full body IK node. The default option requires us to manually remap the bones. However, we're going to reuse the bone names. So we don't need to remap anything manually. Our IK control is reusing the same skeleton that came with the character and it has the proper naming already. So we can actually switch this over to map by attribute instead of mapping attribute. I know the naming is a little weird, but what this will do, map attribute to match name because it already comes with the name and that's the original bone names over here in the animation post. So let's go back over here. This character rig actually comes with the proper naming. This hand over here is hand underscore L. All the bones and all the joints have proper naming already. As you can see here, the IK bone is still labeled hand underscore L. So I'm gonna go back to this rig pose node and I'm gonna try this again. And I'm gonna move the hand and you can see it's moving the entire rig. I know that's not what we want, but this, this shows potential. We can actually manipulate the hand without moving one joint at a time by manipulating one bone, but having Houdini estimate or solve the rest of the other joints. And this saves us a load of time when you're animating. Now, this brings us to another problem though. Why is the entire rig moving? Now, I only want to move the, the hand bone. I, I only want to move the left hand of, of Eric. Well, first of all, let's connect this full body IK and connect it to the joint deform. We have two outputs from the full body IK. Let's see what they look like. I'm gonna get rid of the template. This is our output. So this is our result. That's the target skeleton. Now there's a source skeleton. That's nothing. That's because I haven't stored a rest transform or a rest pose. Usually the second output will give us this result, which is the, the original resting position or default pose. If it, the character is set up properly, it would be the a pose or a T pose. In this case, this is a T pose. We only care about the resulting pose for this example, which is the first output in this node. And I'm just gonna connect this to the third input in the joint deform. And let's see what this looks like. Okay, Eric is, let me bring back the grid. So Eric is leaning back and he's flying up, um, he's up in the air. So let's look at what he looked uh, in the original. 
okay? He's on the ground. His feet are on the ground in his original pose, in his original resting pose. When we manipulated the hand-eye K-bone, it moved the entire Eric rig up into the air. I'm going to template the joint. Now this bone here, higher rig, which is not what we want. We want to tell Houdini, okay, I want everything else to stay in position, but I just want the hand to move. We need some anchor points, what I call anchor points. So I'm going to come over here to that original, to the animation pose. Let's get rid of the template. And I'm going to isolate some more bones. And these bones are going to be my anchor points. And I'm going to choose some points to isolate. So remember, these are the points or the joints that will not move. So choose them wisely. We don't want anything from the feet to move, especially the foot. I think that will do. I do want the hip to move. Sometimes when you're reaching out for something really far away, your, your body tends to lean forward and your hip starts to rotate towards your left or right. So let's keep everything free. So Houdini can choose for us what to do with the rest of the bone, except for the feet. Now, my feet will only be the only anchor points that I need. Now, let's merge this, our IK control and the anchor point. So let's merge both of these and let's connect it to the full body IK. We have our IK do the hard work for us. Now let's try this again. Let's turn this off. Now you can see that the feet are planted on the ground now. So that's important. So the ground is right here. I don't know if you can see, it's a very faint line. Maybe that's a bit better. He's definitely floating above the ground is what I wanted to show you. Now let's connect our anchor points back in. So I'm going to take this merge and I'm going to connect it back into the full body IK. And instantly you see Eric has his feet planted back onto the ground. And now we're modifying just the hand, which is perfect. So if we can play around with this. Let's go back to this rig pose node, highlight this, come over to the 3D viewport, press enter. And we got that nice little widget. Let's move this hand around. Nice. Now he could be washing cars who knows the wiping the washing windows this would be awesome for stuff like a lot of procedural modeling because we can easily driving the entire rig with one bone we can apply a sine wave on this and his hand could be moving up and down in order to create different types of motions it could be waving hi now his head and hips is leaning backwards which is might not be what you want since i'm trying to do like a, a high motion here i don't want his head to be going upwards or he could be reaching for something like you, you wouldn't stick out like your body would not make this sort of uh shape in order to fix this we can add a few more anchor points let's extend this grab this and let's choose a few more bones to add I want his head to stay in position. So let's take this neck bone to the anchor point. Let's come over here to the rig pose and let's play around with this again. So definitely his head is not moving. The issue now is the feet are starting to float around. So I think I accidentally removed the feet from the anchor points. Let's go back and add the feet back to the anchor points. So that's the only thing that's selected. and. If you look closely, I've lost the feet. So let's add that back in. So while I was choosing the neck bones uh, for anchor points, I accidentally deselected the feet. So let's add the feet back to the anchor points. Let's try that again. So let's go back to that rig pose node and let's try that hand waving one more time. Okay, that's, that's a bit better, but you can still see that the feet are still floating in mid air. If the hand goes up high enough, you can start to see He's, Eric is starting to fly and <laughs> float above the air. His feet are starting to fly up. It's like flying. You're gonna have a lot of fun with this. But that's not what we want because I don't want him, f his feet floating around the air. This brings us to the next topic where we're gonna add priority to each IK controls to tell Houdini which control, which IK control bones should be followed more precisely when compared to the other IK control bones when there's a conflict that arises. Just like this example, when we hold up Eric's hand high enough, it affects the feet. 
In the next video, we'll finish up with the Eric rig and fix our feet issue by adding priority to the joints on the feet. Demo some examples of an octopus character I've been working on, which will also be released to perk members so you can practice some of your Houdini's kin effects. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.